I'm a spite. In the shout, Nilti and Ukomi squatted. Martina appeared in Uko and squatted. Our um, Stratim, I'm Lilotim. I went to residential school throughout my years from grade one to grade 12. I graduated from Indian Residential School in 1957. I am a survivor of the residential school in St. Mary's Residential School in Mission City, BC. I believe I was six years old when I first went to residential school. They came to our, where we were camping at the hop yards, working at the hop yards. Priests would come in a big cattle truck to pick us up. And so we rode on the back of the cattle truck to go to the school. So uh, whether it was rainy, cold, or anything, we still had to sit, sit in the cattle truck on benches. When we get to residential school, we were split up. The boys were on one side and the girls were on the other side. And if we were so much to talk to anyone, we were scolded and punished. So we weren't allowed to talk to our brothers. If you weren't asleep at a certain time, and the, the senior monitors would come around, and if they thought you weren't sleeping, they'd tell you, go line up, go line up. And the nuns would strap us, put us over a bed and strap us. And if you wet your bed, they would take your sheet and put it on your head and march you outside so everybody can see that you wet your bed. And then we would be lined up to go to the dining room, stood by the table and said our prayers to eat. But the rule was that we ate what was put in front of us, whether there was mealworms in them or the milk was sour. We, we had to eat the food that was there, because otherwise we'd be hungry. And the other rules were that uh, everybody had chores, but we also had senior girls looking after the younger ones, so they were the ones that taught us what we had to do to, to look after ourselves. We were severely punished. They could, uh, sometimes if you swear, you had to stick your tongue out and get a brush with soap on it and brush your tongue. Or you have to say your, say your prayers over and over again. But I know that nobody really wanted that ugly tasting soap on your tongue. As, as a mother, as a wife, as a community member, when I left residential school, I hated who I was. I hated who I had become. I came home thinking that I would change my people because they were into, into a lot of social issues drinking stuff. I thought I was all ready to be a good Christian, be able to afford all the luxuries that I saw in the, in the non-native homes when we were marching in the mission cities. March, we, we always went for walks as a group and we would see all the beautiful homes and compare them to our own homes. Our homes were uh, no electricity and we had an outhouse, etc. That We were happy in our homes, but they always told us, this is what kind of home you should be built, getting. You should be working towards, get your education, get out there. And so we always felt very poor, even though later on in my life I knew that we were rich, rich in all the gifts that we had in our land that we gathered, not with material things, but with the love of our families 
and, and our extended families. And I believe that uh, any abuse that we got from our husbands because they were into alcohol, that it was a normal way of life. But it took me, took a lot of, uh, a lot of drive for me to eventually get all my education, become, go to university, even though I had to fight for my right to be a woman that can go get educated. I think by learning my language, by learning how to do the drumming, singing, um, but in the University of uh, UBC, we were studying about uh, Native education, Indian education. And in doing all the reading on the history of how the residential schools came about, how colonialism took over our people, were given that um, order to change our lives as Native people, to get rid of the Indian. So throughout my university in doing all that reading, carrying my books and reading them and crying, crying because I had to relive it all again it triggered me and that was part of my healing is to to look beyond the the treatment I was getting and say put myself in the shoes of my offenders Ah, he oh.